So, back for the team builder for the quarterfinals of the High Roller Draft League Season 3. I am specifying Season 3 because Season 4 will start after Season 3 has finished. If you are interested in that, uh, it will be starting most likely on the 22nd of January. Seems to be the date uh, that it will be happening at the moment. If you are interested in joining in future ones, uh, then you should go and check out Jin's Twitter. I'll have a link in the description uh, to, any, uh, to the sign-up links that you need to go to. So, if you are interested in that, then please do go and join that. Uh, but this is still season three at the moment. We are in the quarterfinals doing another $100 money match, this time against Cortex, who amusingly uh, had to pick their team from uh, the remnants like I did for the XDL uh, because uh, circumstances meant they, had, they missed the draft in initially and then they had to pick from the Pokemon that were left at the end. And they made it to the quarterfinals. Like, it's just proving that remnants teams can be absolutely fine. You can see it on the screen there. Uh, I think I I have a reasonable matchup here. It seems okay. It initially seemed like Frostlass, Crocodile, Frost Breath, Angle Point, immediate win. But then I forgot that Dracozol actually outspeeds uh, the Frostlass when it's got the Sand Rush going. Uh, choice cards exist. So uh, yeah, it, it's unfortunately not as simple as that. It did look like it initially, but uh, got a little bit of a different plan that seems to be okay here. Shell Smash Blastoise seems to be pretty reasonable going into this matchup. Conveniently, Blastoise is able to outspeed the uh, Dracozolt by just a couple of points and that's all it needs. So if I've got up my Shell Smash, then I will be able to just get the get the Blastoise faster than the Dracozolt and KO it with a plus two Hailstorm. And then I should be sorted in that regard. The Wacom Berry is just extra insurance against that Dracozolt because that is absolutely the best way of breaking through the Blastoise. The other ways are pretty slow. There's the Tangler to an extent, but that would just be going for sleep powders. It's Leaf Storm would hurt a little bit, but it should be it should be okay. Tangler could be a little bit of an issue, uh, but that's what the Clefable is for. It's got the safety goggles to keep it safe from the uh, keep the Blastoise safe from the Tangler. It can't spam sleep powder when the Clefable is on the field, so that's pretty much sorted in that regard. I'm almost certainly leading with Clefable Blastoise going into this matchup. If they go with the Trick Room route with the Jellicent and maybe the Gardevoir, we will see if the Gardevoir has Trick Room. Uh, but if they go the Jellicent route, which they very reasonably could because it is a wall somewhat to Blastoise, i.e. immune to the Cannonade. Uh, I still got Blast uh, Blastoise with Dark Pulse to be able to hit it, so that would be fine. Uh, but then if they do go Tangler Jellicent as a way of just guaranteeing that Trick Room goes up, doesn't really matter. They're not breaking through the Clefable very quickly at all, and then I'll still Shell Smash even though they're going for Trick Room and still hopefully be able to just sweep through the, with the Blastoise in that regard. So should be able to with this Clefable. Uh, it's got Reflect there because the team is reasonably physical and it was just a filler move. So uh, I definitely wanted Moonblast following me and Helping Hands. Moonblast is going to be able to hit the Scrafty really well and it's just really defensive because there's only a couple of special attackers on the team and the Moltres doesn't really do well against the Clefable anyway. Uh, the Gardevoir could be okay, but mainly, mainly scared about the physical threats here. So that's why I've got the Reflect and the Bold Typing with the Clefable. And just a tiny bit of speed investment just to try and creep the... Uh, that's Tangler and maybe the Scrafty as well that's trying to creep my Clefable. Uh, so going to go on to the Heatran. He's going to be Flamethrower this time with uh, with Substitute. Haven't used Substitute, I don't think, on Heatran yet, even though that is one of the most common sets normally in VGC. Uh, but Substitute is very nice here. If I face up against the Tangler, I can just go for the Substitute in the face of the, the Sleep Powder. I'll be able to block that very nicely. Uh, it should be able to Substitute in the face of Trick Room and then just be able to stall it out as well. And Flamethrower is the move of choice here to be able to hit the Corviknight a little bit stronger. Heat Wave is not quite going to do it. Flamethrower is a roll, depending on bulk. And Overheat I don't particularly want because I would like the Heatran to just sit on the field for a little while and just start spamming some damage. Don't feel the need for Flash Cannon at all. Uh, Earth Power hits the Gigalith well and the Gardevoir I wall completely. So I don't, I don't need Flash Cannon to be able to deal with the Gardevoir. I just will sit in front of it and flamethrower it. So these two moves are perfectly acceptable. This is pretty much the standard Heatran. You can expect to see, I guess, Sugarberry over the leftovers could be um, considered more standard on the Heatran, but Diggers B is just going to blow the Heatran away even with a Sugarberry, so there's no point of that. I might as well try and position the Heatran so it's substituted in front of the Diggers B, uh, or before the Diggers B hits the field, I guess, uh, would be the way of saying it. And then if I got that substitute up, the Heatran is pretty safe, so uh, should be pretty good going into this matchup, and Crocodile will also be very good in this matchup. Initially, it was like the anger, like I said, the anger points were supposed to just sweep through, and then in practice, it just did not. And as soon as I changed to Intimidate, then I didn't lose a, another practice match. So uh, the Intimidate on Crocodile is very nice, like I said. 
reasonably physical team. I have to contend with the potential mirror armor of reflecting the Intimidate back on the Crocodile, but that wouldn't be the worst thing. Uh, I do have Blastoise and Heatran that can deal with Call of Night very well. I'm not too concerned with Call of Knights. I've got Zapdos uh, in the back as well. Uh, I'm like, well, probably sitting on the bench, but not expecting them to go with the Call of Night route because I do have very good ways of being able to deal with it and it doesn't really do enough quickly enough to me so uh, i'm not too concerned about the mirror armor the crooked are going to be able to do very well against the sand core it just beats dracker's alt gigalith very handily and even if it's not the max mon to be able to do that it can just switch in and out for the intimidates and so the crocodile is going to be very very nice here that's why i've gone with the life orb so it can do the most damage it is an incredibly likely uh, dynamax candidate in fact it's almost certain if the blastoise is not able to get going with its shell smashes i'm probably not going to dynamax the Blastoise unless I've got a Shell Smash because Crocodile as a max Pokemon is very, very good as well. So uh, the only way Blastoise is going to be better than that is if it's an emergency or if I've got my, my boosts going with the Shell Smash. So this is the most likely Dynamax Pokemon uh, going into this match. And I'm almost certainly bringing these four to the match. Mean Shout and Zapdos, probably not. We'll see how that goes. That means Shell's a little bit of extra insurance uh, with the with the fake out and stuff. It's pretty good against Diggersby if that gets a little bit out of hand. Uh, but yeah, I'm not expecting to bring the Mean Shell or the Zapdos. It's here pretty much to B team preview stuff. Like, of course, I want Zapdos because there's a Corviknight and I've got the fake out potential with the Mean Shell, so uh, that's why they're here. It's pretty standard. Uh, conveniently, Mean Shell outspeeds their entire team with just Adamant Max. It outspeeds. The Moltres by one speed point, so I can go Adamant, which is quite nice. Got the Inner Focus because they've got a Scrafty, which has Intimidate and Fake Out. So I definitely want Inner Focus on the Mean Chow. Want to knock off for the Marowak and then just fill a move, Helping Hand, why not? So, uh, but like I said, probably not bring the Mean Chow, probably not bring the Zapdos either. It's got Discharge to get around the Marowak in case I need to be able to hit a Corviknight that's next to a Marowak or a Jellicent that's ne next to a Marowak. But yeah, I'm not pro probably not bringing this Zapdos. It seemed okay. Uh, on initial team preview, but yeah, I think that these four are definitely the best. So almost certainly going to be going with those into the match. Uh, we'll see if they can break through uh, this core because in practice, as soon as I switched to, I didn't initially have Blastoise on the team. I did have, uh, like I said, the Frostlass over the Blastoise and the Anger Point Crocodile. But then as soon as I switched to Blastoise and then Intimidate Crocodile, I didn't lose a single practice match. So I'm uh, hoping that's not going to uh, make me overconfident going into the match, but I do feel pretty reasonable going into the this. Like, I, I feel better about this matchup than I have a lot of other matchups. So um, I am looking forward to this. I'm hoping that, of course, that I will be able to make it to the semifinals. Uh, another hundred dollars would be lovely and the money is, is going to start increasing even more as we get further and further along in this tournament. So uh, hopefully I'm going to put on a good show.